Give me the, give me the keys. Okay, guys. Uh, I have a uh, important, uh, important breaking news. A guy important breaking news. I was just notified by Mario. I was just notified by Mario that Warren Buffett today, Warren Buffett exchanged his dinars today. Warren Buffett got paid today. I repeat, Warren Buffett got paid today. Why? Because the elite are the first one to get paid when there is an exchange going on. That's why. Esta es la última noticia, viene de Rino. Warren Buffett, el multimillonario Warren Buffett, acaba de cambiar sus dinares. Acaba de cambiar sus dinares porque los primeritos en cambiar serán las élites. Ok, so, Warren Buffett exchanged his dinars today. It was basically reported by Mario, ok? So something is going on, we gotta just make sure that we are, you know, we take it easy. Things are looking good, all right? And uh, right now I'm leaving to a specified place where I'm gonna meet the bankers, all right? I'm gonna meet the bankers, as you can see, I'm in my car, and we're gonna go and have some interesting meeting, and tomorrow I may have a show, okay? So just to let you know, guys, everything is looking, is looking really fine. And just take it easy, don't worry about it. Warren Buffett just exchanged, and this is huge, all right? This is huge because he's uh, recently, um, he recently uh, basically uh, invested millions of dollars. And I'm believing in one of these banks, I don't remember what bank he actually invested. So it also caught my attention why he actually invested in those, in those banks. And that, that's because they're liquidating, they, they're actually liquidating the banks, because the banks need to have liquidation. They need to have billions of dollars in order to pay, in order to pay these changes. They do it basically to, you know, to gain, they're gonna have trillions of dollars. That's why these people never go poor because they know how to use money, all right? They really know how to use money. You follow the money by following the billionaires, by following the banks. You do not follow the bullshit of the family dragon. No, you follow the banks. Those are the people that you follow. Got it? Beautiful. Uh, el multimillonario Warren Buffett cobró hoy. Hoy cambió todos sus dinares. Y esa es la manera que ustedes tienen que aprender. Ellos, acá, él acaba de inversionar miles de millones de dólares no me acuerdo en qué banco él empezó a hacerlo y me llamó mucho la atención, lo cual yo le, yo le pregunté a la élite por qué lo estaba haciendo y ahora me estoy, me estoy dando cuenta. Lo que pasa es que él está liquidando el dinero, está inversionándolo para el cambio público. Él va a ganar miles de millones de dólares solamente en el cambio público porque él está poniendo de su propio dinero, está generando dinero para el cambio público. Por eso que ellos lo hacen así. All right, so... I'll just explain to you why Warren Buffett uh, has changed because he got the rate and he wants to get paid. The elite must, take, must get paid, just like I told you. All right, so they know something you don't know, right? They know something you don't know. And that's basically uh, my information tonight. So I might have a show tomorrow, I don't know, uh, because I gotta go back from where I gonna come back. And I don't know if I'm going to be too tired to do the show, but wait for my posting. Uh, I cannot assure you if I'm going to do a show tomorrow or not. Okay, guys? Um, mañana, no sé si voy a hacer el show porque voy a venir muy cansado. Así que no sé si voy a poder hacerlo, pero de todos modos, esperen por mi publicación. Okay, guys? Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'll talk to you later. And um, I'm just waiting for this guy to come, to come back. And gave me the keys of the car. Uh, he took the keys because he had to do something in the back. So, in uh, well, I gotta do what I gotta do. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. See ya.
All right, all right. Welcome back to Eyes Open Media. All right. So you just heard from Benny talking about he was sitting outside in his car or somebody's car. And he was talking about Warren Buffett. All right. Exchanging. So uh, and that's coming from his people's, his uh, elite bankers. So, you know, um, I guess we'll see. Uh, what I did was I went to the um, online and I looked for Warren Buffett and banks and this is what pulled up here. It says that Warren Buffett is a big fan of banking industry. And uh, it says here that uh, Warren Bu Buffett j just invested $1.2 in three bank stocks. And this was August 2018. Okay, August 16, 2018. So not that far off from where we are now. And then also just 23 hours ago, two days ago, and two days ago, you can see Warren Buffett about banks or everything connected to banks for Warren Buffett. So is it possible that Warren Buffett did exchange uh, with all this banking stuff going on? It is possible. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, here's to attempt, uh, uh, let's see here. It says 10 stocks Warren Buffett is buying and six he's selling. It says uh, Warren Buffett's uh, big bank bet explained using a basic measure of the market value and three interesting things about Warren Buffett's bank stock buys. So bank, so Warren Buffett has been bank, buying bank stocks because maybe he's been told something, okay? He's been told that a lot of money is about to infuse into the banking industry, I'm guessing. I don't know, okay? So if he had, and he did this before that, you know, he exchanged, right? So if he has exchanged, right? We don't, we don't, I don't know personally because I didn't see it, right? This is what, what Benny was told, okay, um, by his bankers. Now Benny is an ex-banker, so these are people that he he's met with. He knows personally, okay. So that's what they told him, okay. So that's all we can go by. But it, it is interesting that Warren Buffett was all about was all into these banking banks before he actually maybe did exchange, okay. So that is not a coincidence, okay. Um, if I came to this and I saw and I saw nothing with Warren Buffett on banks. Then it would have been like, okay, and this is maybe a 50-50. Now I think it's about 90% chance that something did happen with Warren Buffett. Just the fact that he ramped up his his uh you know stocks on banks and investments in banks. And I go to here and all of a sudden you got all bunch of articles on banks and Warren Buffett. Out of the blue. So, <laughs> okay. So why Warren Buffett loves banks? I mean, it's all over. So... Interesting. Interesting timing as well. Okay. So anyways, let's move on from there. You guys can, you know, it could be 50, 50, it could be 70, 30, whatever the case may be. It could be 90, 10, all depends on what you believe and what you think. Um, but we'll know something and we'll know soon, sooner or later, won't we? Okay. You know, we'll know sooner or later. Um, Rafidian bank, uh, on the silence, uh, uh, Rafidian bank out of silence, excuse me. Okay. And issued a statement on the sinking 7 billion dinars by rainwater. Okay. So Rafidian bank basically opens up about what happened. And, uh, they said that they issued, uh, they issued a statement on the, uh, 7 billion IQDs. And now they're saying that this incident occurred in 2013. It didn't incur, it didn't even occur right now. It didn't even occur this year. They're saying that what they're talking about, what the people are talking about that are trying to fire the central bank governor is something that happened in 2013. Now, if they want the central bank governor to go, that's, that's, that, you know, that, then they then they'll put somebody in that's a technocrat that actually knows that that position now you know you know Ali Al Alak he knows that position now because of training right um, but if they if the if the if the West and, and Iraq uh, bring somebody that has uh, bipartisanship you know what I mean uh, and he he's literally half Western and half I Iraqi and they put him in a central bank and he knows exactly what he's doing then that's fine. OK, uh, we want technocrats in, in, in the areas. We don't need people that are, need to be babysit. But um, they're saying here that the incident happened in 2013. OK, <laughs> and it says at the time, the uh, the director general was uh, Kamal al Hassani. OK, and we have heard that name several times. OK, and then uh, it says the M was replaced and replaced at the time. So the seven billion IQD was damaged. And then replaced. So it's already been 
can, it's the issue has, I don't, I don't know why this is even being brought up unless they're trying to use it and to manipulate the media to, to remove uh, Ali a lot. Okay. So now, like I said before, if they have a, an actual technocrat that the West and Iraq have agreed upon, and when I mean the West, the IMF, basically, okay, the IMF and the World Bank have agreed upon, or just the IMF, that's the who appoints the uh, CBI governor. So if there's an agreement to put in somebody else, in that per, then they'll put in somebody else, okay? But they don't have to use a, an incident from 2013 to do it, though. Okay, so Rafidian Bank comes out and says, "Bruh, this incident happened in 2013, and it's already been it's already been fixed. I don't know why they're using it." Okay, so yeah, that's what that's basically what this article is saying. Okay, it's already been replaced. It, it, everything it was, and it was years ago. So that's what they're saying. So they're saying it's kind of surprising. They even said it's 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 surprising that this, that they're bringing this issue up at this time. Okay. And uh, because they want to remove Ali Alak, that's why. Okay, so they're bringing this up. It has nothing to do with Alak, and they want to re use it to remove Alak. So that's what they're doing. And maybe it works. Maybe the, I don't know. We just, time will tell, right? Within a, but maybe another this week we might find out, right? Um, and if I was Alak, key words, Ali Alak, key words, because I broke my name and on the currency and I signed it. I might want to raise the value. I might, you know, like I might because if they kick me out, they're going to remove my name, okay, and remove my signature off of the notes, most likely, and do something their way. Now, also, I know a lot of people want a lot, uh, you know, Ali a lot to go, you know, they, you know, and uh, I think Benny even said that he's part of the old cabal and things. Like that. The problem with that is, yes, that's true, and things like that. But how long is it going to take? If we put a new CBI governor in, is he going to want three to six months to understand the Iraqi Central Bank and and have a, having to keep the two percent and things like that before he acts, acts uh, you know, re, you know, changes the value and brings the small notes out? Does he need? Does is he going to need time? Okay. Now, what they could do, which would be an even smarter decision, was if they're going to remove Ali Alak. They should just put Dr. Shabibi back in, and then the the technocrat that they have and that they want to replace Ali Alak with would be side by side with Dr. Shabibi, and he can do the monetary policy and the dropping of the three zeros, and then uh, and then teach that other guy to take over within three to six months. That would be more proper. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's how I I see it, but. I just wouldn't bring somebody in thinking that they know how to use the system that Dr. Shabibi set up that took uh, it took Ali Alak a long time to understand the system. So unless that guy has been being groomed already behind the scenes, right, from Shabibi and others to learn how to use the system and he can come in there right away and do it. OK, so that we're taking a chance if we did that, though, uh, if Dr. Shabibi isn't there with him. Uh, cause it could, you know, he could be like, I, I don't understand the, the system yet. I'm still learning the system. Give me time. I'm going to need at least three months. I'm like, Oh God, here we go with, here we go with April again. You know what I mean? Cause that's the time where they usually change the rate in April. So I don't want to see that. Okay. I don't want to see that, but if it happens, it happens and I have to deal with it. Okay. But if they do bring a new person in, I hope Shabibi's there with him and, and uh, Shabibi can do the monetary policy and remove the zeros and then teach the guy how to control the uh, the rate and stuff like that. Um, okay, so it says here that on Friday, the central bank governor agency under relations will not remain in office and will be questioned within parliament. Okay, now remember back a couple years ago, uh, Ali Alak did tell us that he would be removed if the government went away from a proxy government. Remember that? Remember the interview he did? He said that he would be removed if the government went away from proxy. So the government is going away from proxy. They're not doing the proxy government. They're doing a democracy government or democratic government or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So that that makes sense. Okay. That he's removed because of because he's in the proxy position and they want technocrats in all the positions. 
Okay, so that makes sense because he did tell us that he would be removed if they, uh, but they're trying to find a way to remove him by using something from 2013, and that's just not going to work. Um, okay, and but they, they're, and they also try to remove him by um, saying that he signed, he put signature on his, on his, on the currency with his name. So he put his name plus he put a signature on it. But other central bankers are doing that now. But he's a proxy. He's a acting. He's not the actual governor, and that's the problem they had. Okay, so if I'm Ali Allah and I know that I'm about to be removed or I could be removed, they're threatening to remove me, I'm lifting the value. <laughs> That's it. I'm lifting it. I'm not going to let the currencies that I sign my name on become worthless or be burnt and thrown away, and then they create new ones. I'm going to lift the value. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break the system, and I'm going to lift the value, and there's nothing they can do about it. Okay? So if I lift that value... I protect myself, okay? I keep, I, 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 th those currencies must now go out. Everything must go on because they can't reverse it. That's the, that's the key. If he lifts the value, they cannot reverse it, okay? So that's what Alok should be thinking about right now. He should be thinking about lifting that value and, re and flooding the, uh, the uh, streets with the small notes and the new lower notes and the small notes with his signatures on it. OK, that's what he should be doing right now. OK, because when he does that, they cannot go back. Regardless, if they bring him in the parliament and stuff, the value is already lifted. Now they must protect the value. OK, now they must protect their country. That's going to be the bigger issue. They can get they can kick him out and everything, but they can't re, re, they can't, re, uh, you know, take that back. Once he does it, it's over. OK, and now they have to protect their value. Now things have changed. So. That's what a lot should be thinking about right now. I'm going to lift the value to protect to to make sure my name is remembered forever. That's that's what I would be doing. I don't know why these people don't think like me, <laughs> but um, I, I wouldn't be doing nothing else but saying I'm lifting that value, bringing in all the central bank people in and say where my name's on that note on the on the notes. My signatures on the notes. I'm lifting the value. Okay, next week I'm lifting the value, guys. I'm lifting the value. We have to protect the names on on the. We have to protect the currency in the name. They want me out. Let's let the value. And if we get kicked out, we get kicked out. But they cannot reverse it. That's okay. And be like one, two, three, go. <laughs> okay, like a like a little huddle. Okay, like a little meeting. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going on. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going on. All right, so they're talking about removing a lock, okay, and uh, and re and basically rebuking what uh, Maliki and on a body did, okay, during the the time period uh, the central bank governor a lock was in the uh, position. Okay, uh, Tamimi, okay, uh, explains the fact that her husband's nomination for the post of governor of the central bank. Okay, so uh, Tamimi's been in office for a lot, long time. You guys remember Tamimi? I talked about Tamimi a lot. She really was the backbone of the uh, of the GOI, um, pressing forward for a. Um, and sometimes she did flip though, and I think it's because. It was Maliki's media. Um, you know, Maliki was in charge of so much of the media that they would flip her words, and then she would have to come out and say, "I didn't say that." Okay, <laughs> okay. So she was always for, uh, you know, the small notes, the uh, lifting of the value, and things like that, and getting back onto the, onto the reality of Iraq. And so on Saturday, she said that you know that the uh, her husband's nomination uh, for the central bank government is uh, is not true, and that these are people and these are news agencies that are trying to destroy and defame their name. Okay, so you know that's what they're she says uh, when we need to fight the corruption and and the corrupt media. So it's not just. America dealing with corrupt media. It's everybody dealing with corrupt media. The media has been now used for corruption and propaganda and to destroy people, right? People's names. And that's what they're trying to do to Tamimi and her husband, saying that they're going after the central bank governor position, <laughs> okay, to give them a bad look and, and create chaos. Okay. So she says she's offended by the, by the, the lies and the fabrication. Okay. So Tamimi, hold your ground over there in Iraq. <laughs> um, Washington here is uh, putting a single condition to return for granting Iraq a blanket exemption from applying its sanctions against Iran. Okay, so we already know that 
Abdul Mahdi and and uh, wants to meet Trump and he wants to uh, you know Trump to basically uh, you know take his hand off of Iran uh, on, on Iraq uh, you know so Iraq can continue uh, business as usual with Iran and you know and then articles came out the next day talking about well um, Washington wants Iraq to distribute the wealth to the people. Okay, so if you're going, if you want to continue to do business with Iran, you want me to take the sanctions, you know, do not have you under sanctions with Iran and, and give you an exemption, distribute the wealth to the people, right? Um, and then this here says some, some, some other stuff that, you know, there's some more exceptions that they want them to do. Okay, they want the Iranian regime, uh, must respect the uh, sovereignty of the Iraqi government and blah, 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 all the other things that they want them to do. Uh, also, um, the United States has set 12 conditions on Iran to lift their sanctions. So I, there's 12 conditions that Iran can meet to have their sanctions lift and, and Donald Trump removes his hands off of Iran and removes the sanctions. So there are 12 things that they need to meet. Okay. Um, the conditions are based on the nuclear program, the suspension of the all the Iranian enrichment activities. The end of the deployment of ballistic missiles, the release of U.S. citizens in Iran, and the end of support of armed groups in the Middle East, including the lesbian Hezbollah and the Palestinian faction. So there's a bunch of stuff that Iran needs to do to be fully lifted off of the new Donald Trump sanctions, okay? Um, but we're just talking about, we're just wor basically worried about Iran right now. I mean, Iraq, right? So Iraq and uh iran and uh because iraq needs the energy electricity and the gas uh imports from iran or they will literally pay a severe price um so they got to try they want to keep that going so we'll see how this all plays out within between now and the 45 day time frame and we'll see how this goes this all is between now and and january 1 so we'll just see how it all plays out so you know, um, we'll just see. But if I'm, like I said before, I'm the CBI governor and they're about to, they really want me out. I'm going to look that value and I'm, and I'm going to be out. <laughs> I'm going to remember, remember what happened. Remember I told you Maliki left. Maliki knew he was out and he flooded ISIS into Iraq. If the central bank governor knows he's out, which I thought a body was going to do this, right? But a body just started the process before he left. Okay, the central bank governor can flood the lower notes and the small notes into the streets before he leaves. Okay, so like I said before, that would be, I mean, that's just common sense if you're uh, Ali Alak. Okay, to flood the streets with the new lower notes, the five, 250s, 500s, and then the small notes and the coins. Flood and lift the value. Flood them and lift the value and get out of there. That's it. Your name's on the, your signature's on the notes. You're good, okay? And then just get out of there. That's all, that's how I'll do it, okay? And maybe he needs to go to another country. Maybe he'll chill in Dubai or chill in London or somewhere else, but he doesn't have to live in Iraq, okay? Especially if he does that, he won't. <laughs> if he does that, he, gotta, he better be out. Maybe he'll go and chill with Dr. Shabibi in Switzerland, you know what I mean? So, I mean, he got other places he can go to. All right. So, anyways, last one. Let's uh, actually let's just go up and uh, just read the headlines here. So we know that uh, Saleh, the president of Iraq, was uh, was in Iran and they met and they did the uh, the uh, prophetic uh, partnership yesterday. So Benny's video, I posted that video. So check that video out. The per the prophetic part partnership um, where Iran and Iraq do a partnership deal and it was about the free they, they did several things but the big one was the free trade zone at the border so they're going to do it and i told you guys um when when prophet of solomon made that prophecy about iran and iraq i told you guys it might be something at the borders and some type of financial thing at the borders and i think that's what it was yesterday i think we saw it yesterday where it's the uh, free trade zone the first ever free trade zone at the borders 
Okay, so we believe that it was the prophetic uh, partnership, and uh, and then the Lord said, when you see that, then you're very, you're you're at the end. You're at the end when you see that. When you see that partnership, you're at the end. So there you go. And now they're trying to kick out a lock. Okay, so and a lock needs to just lift the value and flood the streets uh, with the notes and and be out like Maliki did. Maliki flooded ISIS, and a lock needs to flood the streets with the lower lower and small notes and get out of there. Um. Okay, this is some honor stuff, so we don't have to really talk about that, about the projects, okay? Game rewarded. Let's see what this is. Uh, Baghdad reveals uh, 12 formal demands, rela okay, related to the budget. We don't care about the budget. Moving on. Let me click up here since this thing's taking forever. Oh, this might even take forever as well. Um, the president of uh, the Republic will go to Tamaria. Yeah, we already know about that. Uh, he's in Saudi Arabia today. Okay, Parliament is set for Wednesday. Man, these people cannot keep a date. They said Tuesday, then they said Monday. Now they're saying Wednesday. Okay, now Tuesday is a holiday. That's why they had to move it. It's the uh, it's the um, what's his name? The Iman Iman Hassan. Uh, I guess the death of Iman Hassan. Okay. Um, so anyways, uh, let's see here. America thanks uh, Brazani and the government of Kirsten uh, to resume the exports of oil. Yeah, that was a big deal. That was a big deal for the HCL and oil and gas law, right? That was huge. Now, I wouldn't thank Brazani. I mean, he got like $70 billion in stolen money. I mean, I wouldn't be thanking him, but whatever. Uh, the government, yeah, so, so, so this is cool. So, so it paves the way to resolving the differences between Herbal and Baghdad. I was waiting for Kirkuk. I was like, if they can't get Kirkuk uh, back to, um, you know, pumping oil for Kirsten, well, we will never see that oil and gas law. Okay, so they got it done. So that's pretty good. That's pretty big. Um, well, at least we'll never see the activation of it. They want to change six ministers and bring in the other and bring in the rest and fulfill the rest of the ministers i'm not sure what's taking so long on that uh maybe because they want technocrats and not um and not the quota system okay the um speaker of the house uh says parliament is witnessing a new era strong and courageous headed by just you know whatever oh that's talibani talibani is saying it about the uh, speaker of the house and the parliament okay uh and you got another imam is talking about the uh precise knowledge of the me and the friend is very important in foreign policy we don't care about that that was from yesterday okay holiday yeah on the birth of the uh, prophet iman hassan okay official no chaos at baghdad international fair and pricing imposed to serve visitors okay Let's keep it moving. Brazani and the U.S. officials of Baghdad's new government created a chance to solve problems in greater cooperation. Yeah. Okay. Baghdad International Fair, 2018. And it says uh, Joint Iraqi Operations Command from RT. Um, it says our borders with Syria are fully uh, insured and monitored. Okay. So we're coming to the end of uh, everything secured, man. Everything secured. So we're coming to the end of Baghdadi. And as you guys know, um, Baghdadi is going to be caught here very soon. Uh, or announced very soon. Uh, you know, they play games. They probably already have this guy. He, he probably, Baghdadi's probably on an island chilling right now. And they're about to announce that Baghdadi's been caught. I mean, this is what they do. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Kirsten government disrupts uh, official working hours on, on Tuesday. So Tuesday is what Tuesday is the twentieth, right? Okay. So Tuesday the twentieth. And okay. The twenty second is Thanksgiving. Right? So the twenty second is Thanksgiving. The twenty third is, is Black Friday, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> right? Um, but the twenty second is Thanksgiving. The twentieth is the Iman, Iman's uh, birth, okay, uh, the, the, now, this is a holy, this is a holy holiday for the Arab world, okay, so, Benny said that, God said that it was going to happen on a holiday or a holy day, right, 
It was either a holy day or a holiday. I'm not sure. Benny keeps going back and forth between a holiday and a holy day, so I'm not sure. But he said a holy day or a holiday. So it's pretty interesting that we got a holy day here, and we got a holiday here, and a lot's being threatened to be fired <laughs> on, the, on the same week. Okay. Interesting. Now, let's go back to the calendar because... That one lady said that she had the dream, and it said that it was going to be, it was going to RV on the on the month of the of a thirty. So this month has thirty. Next month doesn't have thirty. It has thirty one. Okay, does January have thirty? Nope. January doesn't have thirty either. So so you know her if her dream is correct, it's not going to happen January one, like the uh, like some gurus are thinking, right? I, I know you gurus are thinking it's gonna happen on, on January one. I, I I would like it. I would like to see it on January two, January one too. I mean, if, if if we don't get in November, right? So, but the lady said that her dream saw a month of thirty days. Now, January one it doesn't have thirty days. It had thirty one days. December doesn't have thirty. Only has thirty one days. So the only real thing we can see now we've changed the rate in November before. So. We've changed the listen. We've changed the rate in November before. Okay, so you know that that's a, you know it could happen. So if the lady's dream is correct, it won't happen in December and it won't happen in January. It won't happen in February. It won't happen in March. Okay. Hmm. What month do they always change the rate? Look at that. April has 30 days. So it's either going to be November 2018 or it's going to probably be April 2019. Okay? So that's just going off of her dream. Now, of course, that, that her dream could have been wrong and blah, blah, blah. You know, and then, then we're having a different story. And then it's January 1 or it's this month, right? Uh, I know Turkmenistan, uh, they did it January 1. Okay? Um, so... I know so that's why some people are believing it's going to happen the same way. It could, and I'll be happy, and we'll all be happy, okay, that, that this thing has ended. Um, but if that lady's dream is correct, then, it, you know, and January 1 is a holiday as well. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, that is, that, so it fits perfectly, right? It's a holiday, January 1, New Year's Day, okay, and it fits perfectly, right? Um, but the lady's dream said it's going to happen a month with 30 days, not 31. So, uh, but I will take January one. I'll I'll take this month. I'll take April. You know, I'll, I'll take now. Okay, you know, I just want this thing to be over. Um, but that's very interesting. Um, okay, so the president's in Saudi, and let's let's wrap this up. Rafidian Bang explains the granting of Mastercards. Okay, and then you have uh, the ceremony. Okay. Man, this dude's gone on a world trip. No, he actually, he went on the, uh, you know, a Euro, a um, Middle East trip. And uh, let's see here. The Association of Private Banks uh, is conducting a liquidity risk management and interest rate course. Okay, they're still working. They're still going through the courses. Now, if you see the article, that means they're done. <laughs> okay, they, they, they're just telling you now. Okay, Though those meetings could have been two, three month, uh, weeks ago and uh, maybe even four weeks ago. Uh, where to print the Iraqi currency and how much it costs. Yeah, they used to print it in Switzerland. I know that, but uh, they moved it to, I think, the Bank of London or something like that. Let me see if that's what the article is talking about. The place where the uh, printing on the Iraqi currency point out that it costs four cents per paper. Oh, wow. Okay. So each paper note costs four cents. All right. So it says the central bank uh, was in the past printing the banknotes. Uh, of the Iraqi currency in Switzerland, but it has changed the place of printing and is currently printing in the British institution uh, in London. Okay, so yeah, there it is. Um, what else? Soleil talking to the king of Saudi. Probably talking to him about the journalists. Did you hear that the uh, CIA uh, said that um, the... What was that? Hold up. That's not the... That's the... Um, yeah, that's the other king. But one of the guys from Saudi, one of the high up guys from Saudi was, uh, they said that he was part of it, the, the killing of the journalists. Hmm. That's going to be interesting to see what they do. Now, 
Kim Clement's prophecy says that Saudi Arabia will burn, burn, burn. We're trying to figure what that was. It's the journalists. Now we know what it is. It's, it's the journalists. So the journalists, because of the journalists and because of what they did to him, Saudi Arabia is about to burn, burn, burn. That's why I told people, don't even, I wouldn't even invest in Saudi. I'll watch that thing burn down because of what they did to that journalist uh, and all the stuff that's going to come out later. And committees of the House of Representatives began to hold its meeting. Okay, whatever. Uh, and then this is the last one here. It says, Parliamentary Finance Committee meets with the government uh, committee to discuss the budget in the presence of, this, of the Speaker of the House. All right, so that's it. So that's all the news. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, take care. Eyes open. Bye.